Okay, so one of my favorite comments I've had on my uh, <clears throat> videos on my YouTube channel was a, uh, an individual who asked me if this was a Bucky's shirt that I was wearing. <laughs> I love that. Um, <clears throat> I was just at Bucky's a few days ago in Texas. It's a truck stop, a travel plaza, and it's it's unlike anything. If you haven't experienced Bucky's, you're really missing out. But anyway, um, I love that comment. So it's it's like my favorite shirt, right? Bucky's. You know how you have a T-shirt or a, something that just fits your personality. You like it. <clears throat> yeah, gets washed a lot. Okay, so today, um, I, I this is so exciting to me. I, I want to talk about the ordinance of baptism um, by one with proper authority um, and and the significance of baptism. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. Um, and I think it's... it's uh, uh, Joseph Smith um, said it best in, in section 128, and I'm going to go there in just a second. So... One of the things I want to talk about with Joseph Smith is, is and I've mentioned this many times, but President Nelson and, and other um, members of the 12 First Presidency, they, they mention over and over again that Joseph is the prophet of the restoration or the prophet for the last dispensation. Okay, so I think what Joseph Smith says we really, really need to study and and find out i've also said that in my this is just my opinion but i've often thought of the doctrine and covenants as being a a witness if you will of this dispensation and the book of mormon is a witness of the restoration so that's just kind of how i look at it this dispensation the last dispensation the dispensation of the fullness of times the dispensation of of dispensations where Christ is going to come. He's going to come soon and it's going to be a glorious day. So here, here, here's a scripture I want to read. Um, and I might have mentioned this before, but it, 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 it's worth mentioning again. So this is section 128 verse 11. Now, the great and grand secret of the whole matter. Now, that ought to get your attention. <clears throat> okay? The grand secret of the whole matter. Okay? And the summum bonum. Uh, I was in a meeting once, and someone explained that to me. I think it's Latin, and it's like the, the most important thing, or the, the peak, or I don't know. Anyway, look it up. Uh, the sum of bonum of the whole subject is lying before us. And now you have to read this, these next uh, sentences and, and a couple of verses, maybe just one verse, really, really close, okay? So the whole subject that is lying before us consists, so it's not just this, but it consists uh, in obtaining the powers of the holy priesthood for him to whom these keys are given there is no difficulty in obtaining a knowledge of facts in relation to the salvation of the children of men both as well for the dead as for the living now there's a ton of stuff in there but the powers of the holy priesthood now um, this is just one element. Maybe I'll, I'll read this and then we'll come back to the powers of heaven, okay? Or the powers of the Holy Priesthood, excuse me. Okay, the next, so, so then, then he, 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 he says, so that's one element of this, okay? So it consists of the powers of the priesthood. So that's the authority, if you will. Um, and then I want to explain a little bit more about powers in, in a second. Um, but then here's the next element of it. And I think it's the key. Well, you got to have the, the, the proper authority. But then here it, here it is. Here's, here's the big enchilada after you have the right authority. 
Verse 12, section 128. Herein is glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. Okay, that's basically what we're all shooting for. We're shooting for glory, honor, immortality, and eternal life. There's a distinction between the two, and those of us that are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints know the difference. One is uh, condition, and one is the, the, uh, the, um, uh, <laughs> the quality of that condition, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so here it is. Here it is. Glory, honor, immortality, and eternal life. The ordinance of baptism by water, by water, to be immersed therein in order to answer to the likeness of the dead. This is cool stuff. So the, the, the summum bonum, the big enchilada, if you will, is power baptism. Power and baptism. Okay. And because it's in the likeness of the dead being resurrected, which is a priesthood key that hasn't been restored yet, but that's another topic. Let me say, let me read this. This is in Galatians, <coughs> excuse me, Galatians uh, 3, 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You've put him on, you put his name on you. And, and this is so, so, so significant. I'm going to read a little bit more in here. In fact, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's go to section 84 of the Doctrine and Covenants and talk a little bit about power of the priesthood. <coughs> because I think if we understand these verses I'm going to read in 84, we talk about these as the oath and covenant of the priesthood. And we typically think of that as just guy, a guy thing, right? A guy thing. But let's read these verses carefully. Verse 33, For whoso is faithful unto the obtaining, obtaining these two priests of which I have spoken, and the magnifying their calling, calling, obtaining, calling, are sanctified by the Spirit unto the renewing of their bodies, they become the sons, the sons, the sons of Moses and of Aaron and the seed of Abraham and the church and the kingdom and the elect of God. Kind of sounds like all a guy thing right there. But let's read the next verses. And also, hmm, somebody else is going to be included in this. And also they who receive this priesthood Receive me, saith the Lord. Hmm. If you receive the priesthood, not if you're uh, called to it, not if you obtain it, but if you receive it, accept it. Okay. For he that receiveth my servants receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth my father. For he that receiveth my servants receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth my father. And he that receiveth my father receiveth my father's kingdom. Therefore, all that my father hath shall be given unto him. And this is according to the oath and covenant which belongeth to the priesthood. And then listen to this verse, verse 40. Therefore, all those who receive the priesthood receive this oath and covenant of my father which he cannot break, neither can it be moved. Now, this is just my opinion, okay? This is my opinion. But, but anyone can receive the blessings of the priesthood. Anyone can receive the priesthood in their homes. Anyone can receive the authority, um, not like bestowed upon them, but receive it, accept it. When you receive a gift you take it unto yourself and you go, thank you, this is awesome. I, I'll, I'll receive that gift. So, so in my opinion, this includes men, women, and children who receive the priesthood, right? 
who received the priesthood. Just reminded me of another scripture. Uh, this is in Matthew 18. Um, Matthew 18, very interesting scripture. And it came to pass that the disciples, this is verse one, said unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now this scripture in 84 talked about the kingdom of uh, uh, that you receive everything that the father gives in the kingdom, the father's kingdom, okay? So we could, I think it's fair to say that the father's kingdom and the kingdom of heaven are close to the same thing, right? Okay, if not the same thing. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Think of that visual, think of that scene. And he said, verily I say unto you, except you become, except you be converted and become as, as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will not be enter into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of the Father unless you become like a little child. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So children can receive the kingdom of heaven. Women can receive the kingdom of heaven. Men can receive the kingdom of heaven. Men and children, men, women, and children can receive the blessings or receive the priesthood my opinion that's that's how because you already talk about the guy thing in verse 33 through 34 but then 35 says and also so in addition to the guy thing there are those who receive the priesthood receive me okay um i I, I, I want you to really think about that because it hit me strong uh, quite some time ago and it hasn't left me, okay? So now we're going to go back to baptism. Um, we're going to go back to baptism and we were in, uh, where were we? 128, was it? Yeah, 128. So we, we got the two things, the power of the holy priesthood and then the ordinance of baptism to be immersed therein in order to answer to the likeness of the dead, that one principle might accord with another to be immersed in the water and come forth out of the water is in the likeness of the resurrection of the dead in coming forth out of their graves. Now listen to this. Hence, this ordinance was instituted to form a relationship with the ordinance of baptism for the dead being in the likeness of the dead. So this, so baptism, we always think of, oh yeah, I'm getting baptized or, or um, my child's getting baptized or my friend's getting baptized. And, and you know, that's awesome. They're joining the church and that. But that ordinance was instituted to be like the baptism for the dead because the dead is coming forth from the, the resurrection. So baptism, in a sense, is pointing us towards the sacred ordinance of resurrection, which I think is close. The morning of the first resurrection is close. And we all, um, there, there's a great, uh, um, can't remember where I was reading that, but in the Doctrine and Covenants, um, revealed to Joseph Smith that everybody all the way up to John of the prophets and the righteous people were resurrected at the time of Christ. So that being John the Baptist, right? Because he was beheaded before Christ was would, uh, died and crucified, or, or crucified and resurrected, sorry. <coughs> so, so all those people were resurrected um, and all the righteous saints prior to uh, Christ's time were resurrected at, at the time of Christ. They came forth out of their graves. So the ordinance of living baptism is to reflect that and future resurrections, not just to join the church. It's part of that, but it, it, if you read verse 12 of section 128 carefully, it, it was instituted 
the, the ordinance of baptism by water was instituted to reflect what we're shooting for in the future, and that's resurrection, and not just resurrection, not just immortality, but eternal life. Or, as it says in some other scriptures, eternal lives, which is another sermon. But anyway, so I wanted to bring that up. It's, I think it's an it's a, and it's amazing scripture. First Corinthians 15, else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? We used to use that as a missionary scripture a lot to explain the ordinance of baptism for the dead. But really what we ought to do is be explaining baptism for living because the baptism for the dead was already implemented and the baptism for the living was in a likeness to that baptism to point us towards the resurrection. It, it, you know, it talk, it's, it's a cleansing and it's this and it's that and we all have those scriptures, but this is powerful. And this is powerful because we're looking forward to the morning of the first resurrection. Um, some are looking forward to being quickened and then be resurrected later. Kind of like the, the Nephites, the 12 Nephites had a choice as to whether they wanted to just be resurrected after the age of man, 72, I believe, or get quickened, translated, and uh, raptured, and, and, and then continue to work with the Lord in his uh, service, and then, and then be changed as a resurrected being at some point after that. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards that for, for myself. <laughs> I, I would love to be quick and have a perfected body, not be subject to the pains and, and, uh, ills of the world, but still, still have my body and still be on earth to do some more work with Christ as, as King. That would be pretty awesome. So anyway, let's, let's never discount this ordinance of baptism. I'll never look at it the same way again. Um, it, and oh, it just hurts me when I see baptism treating like, treated like a, just a formality, uh, 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 almost like a birthday. Um, no, no, this is, this is all about the resurrection. So that's it for today. Hope, hope uh, that was helpful in, in a little, little way, uh, just some of the things I've been studying lately. So God bless you all. Um, good to be back home after a great trip to Texas. Love those Christian folks down there. I bought a, a Bible while I was down there. Um, it's a... Uh, uh, through the box away, but it's, 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 uh, a <laughs> it's, um, the apologetics study Bible. And I bought the King James version and there's some interesting things in there. And I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover that, um, with our good Christian friends, uh, some of which subscribe to this channel. And I have some really, really good discussions with, um, concerning faith and works and, and all those things. So anyway, that's it. Hopefully uh, you're all doing okay. Looking forward to um, exciting, exciting times. And, uh, and we're in it. I'm convinced we're in it. So God bless and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.